Good evening um, and welcome to uh, this, uh, as far as I know, first ever arts and cultural leadership uh, web information session. And my name is Tom Borup and I'm the faculty director of the ACL program at the university and uh, a longtime uh, uh, leader, administrator, uh, manager, worker uh, in the arts and cultural community in the Twin Cities. What we're here to do this evening um, is to have a conversation about the ideas of arts and cultural leadership uh, and, and what it means today, um, how it uh, manifests itself, how it happens, um, and using some examples in the Twin Cities area. And um, talk about that, the context of the, the, the Twin Cities in terms of the robust nature of the arts and cultural community and the, and the leadership uh, within it. And finally, a little bit of information about the arts and cultural leadership program, the, the Masters of Professional Studies program at the University of Minnesota. Uh, we won't talk a lot about that. Um, if you have an interest in that, uh, there are ways you can get more information and, and follow up uh, that conversation. Um, what I'd like to do um, is uh, take about an hour, no more than an hour, uh, that we have available. And um, first of all, have uh, those on the, the webinar introduce themselves, um, if you're able to. Um, and I have a, a presentation for a, a few minutes I'd like to share and then um, get into some questions and conversation um, about these ideas uh, that the, the program here uh, explores. Um, so that said, um, uh, let's um, share our, who we are, um, where we're, we're um, working or involved in the community, um, and if there's something particular that interests you, um, the reason that you're here this evening. Uh, my name is Tico, and I work for Asian Economic Development Association. Um, I'm the artist coordinator, and I know Jeff, if you can hear me. Anyway. We'll, we'll unmute him um, after you're done. Oh, okay. Anyway, um, I was just interested in this conversation because it's from Tom. <laughs> okay. And I work in the art sector too, in creative placemaking. So that's something I wanted Great. to Great. Thank you for joining us. Um, Jeffrey, are you able to join in by audio? Yeah. I, it, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Whitman. I am the event manager for the Asian Economic Development Association. Uh, I just started about four or five months ago. And I work with Tico, and um, we're launching uh, a year's worth of placemaking initiatives that um, hopefully will be really exciting and fun. And I'm just here to learn a little bit more about uh, arts and cultural leadership and trying to get some of the basics down. Great. Thank you for joining us. Okay, great. Um, I'm Eleanor Savage. I'm a program officer at Jerome Foundation and have also been involved in the arts community for a long time. <laughs> and um, I'm joining in just to find out more about this, uh, the programming that you're doing and um, hear from some new voices. Great. Thank you, Eleanor, for joining us this evening. Um, so um, I'm going to um, share this. Um, it's, a, it's a PowerPoint presentation, but it's mostly pictures and um, stories uh, that uh, I think tell a bit about this idea of arts and cultural leadership. Um, and obviously, um, here we go. Um, the question that we ask ourselves um, 
constantly because this is a, a, an academic program um, that's both exploring concepts and at the same time preparing people um, to work in the, the world um, uh, and assert these ideas of, of being an arts and cultural leader. So, so we ask ourselves, what is an arts and cultural leader? And we do that in, in the context of what does the world need from its cultural leaders. So we, we hope this is a constant dialogue that we're having, our students are having, our faculty are having um, about uh, what are arts and cultural leaders and what are they doing in the world and what does the world um, uh, value from, from the things that they can contribute. So I want to um, share some, some pictures here um, and some a few stories. And I could talk on and on. I have a couple of these montages of uh, pictures of people. Um, each one, of course, has um, a, a very profound story in terms of their contribution as a leader uh, in the arts and cultural sector. Um, and not all of them right now are in the Twin Cities. They have roots and connections and, and, and histories uh, of working here. Um, and, but I'll just say a few things about some of these folks. And, and I want to start with um, the young woman on the bottom uh, right of your screen, um, Amelia Brown, uh, who's a, a recent graduate of the uh, master's program at the university, a program that's affiliated with the Arts and Cultural Leadership Program. Um, had it existed, in fact, um, this, this is, program is only in its fifth year. Um, uh, she would have been an ideal candidate, um, but we're, we're happy to have her as part of the, uh, both the arts and cultural community as well as uh, being a recent university graduate. Anyway, Amelia um, took an interest in the last couple of years in the role that arts and culture play in times of disaster and great stress in communities. And I just uh, was exchanging messages with her from New Orleans uh, a couple of weeks back on the 10th anniversary of um, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, and she was down there helping out. But she has traveled internationally. She's written and, and already asserted a strong presence as a leader in this really intriguing field of um, the role of arts and culture in, in communities that are undergoing great stress or, or disaster. Um, and uh, just above her, um, Jack Becker, a, a, a long time, um, close to 40 years, um, leader in the public art field in Minnesota, uh, and now uh, nationally and internationally, he's a leader in, in that field. Um, fo he founded and, and is the director of an organization called Forecast Public Art. Um, and he, he continues to work around the country um, in that role. Um, and in, in the center on the top, uh, Beth Peterson um, began her work in the Twin Cities with in the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mask Theater um, and was a leader there for many years and now is in Los Angeles uh, working in a neighborhood called Lamert Park in South Los Angeles. I, I was able to visit her um, just a couple of months ago uh, as she was preparing for a neighborhood festival there. but. Um, she continues her work with people of all ages, people in neighborhoods and communities, um, creating puppets and masks and, and festivals and events. Um, this is an amazing leader. And then um, a couple of institutional leaders, because um, we, we don't want to leave out um, some of the major institutions in uh, the Twin Cities, but um, at top left, Joe Hodge, uh, the incoming artistic director at the Guthrie Theater, um, uh, and certainly taking a position where a lot of people have hopes and expectations. Um, so we'll be, we'll be hearing from him and seeing his leadership over the next few years. Um, and directly below him, um, Kay Wynn Feldman, the, the um, director at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. Um, and obviously a, a major and important institution and she's taking it in some really interesting new directions. And just to the left bottom corner, I know I'm talking a lot about these people, but um, I, I, it's hard not to for me. Um, uh, Robert Karimi, um, a different kind of theater artist than, than Joe Hodge, although I bet they would um, get along famously. Um, Robert uh, is a native of the Bay Area, um, California, um, but has spent many years in 
the Twin Cities. His form of theater is one that engages people in some um, novel ways. Uh, he works with food, with preparing food uh, and, and feeding people, um, and at the same time addressing issues in communities of health uh, and nutrition um, and, and sort of local uh, sourcing of, of food and what that means to it. Um, so anyway, bridging and, and connecting uh, members of communities and, and the arts community in some really remarkable ways. These are all incredible leaders um, in our community that um, uh, we love to celebrate and, um, and relate to, and, and some of them have a, a role in our program, either um, teaching, guest speaking, um, uh, hosting uh, interns, and, and uh, graduating students who are um, uh, undergoing uh, their final project work. Um, and there's more people, um, people who are really remarkable uh, in our community or have been in our community or have, have had an impact on our community. Um, uh, just to the top right, um, um, the, the relatively recent leader of uh, Moo Performing Arts um, and uh, taking that organization in some, some new directions. Um, and jumping to the other top corner of the screen, um, uh, a man who was trained uh, in nursing, uh, who took a real strong interest in the arts um, and, and took some additional training in the arts and has created a program working with people with dementia uh, in various facilities. He's now working, actually, he, he was in the Twin Cities, but is now working in Calgary, Alberta, um, and has created a program that's now in five different facilities with people with dementia, and he's um, teaching uh, nursing students. He has currently 34 nursing students um, who are participating in his art program in, with people with dementia. Um, and he's won some awards and gotten a lot of attention uh, in Calgary for this work. Anyway, I could go on and on. And, and, um, um, but these are some of the, the leaders. And there are many, many more um, in the community here, uh, people who we love to learn from. And, um, and uh, some of them we've inspired, and um, they inspire us in return. So moving on, I um, have a few more slides. It's not a long presentation. Uh, but this question of what do arts and cultural leaders do? And I, I've talked about some of that range um, already. Um, but I'll call your attention to the, the top left. These are community leaders in Duluth, Minnesota, who, and this is a recent picture, and, and they've come together to work on a new arts and cultural plan for the city of Duluth. Uh, and this, I took this picture at the city hall in Duluth um, during one of their uh, uh, working sessions. But these are community people who have volunteered their time to be leaders um, in, in shaping the future of arts and culture in their city. Uh, and the, the top right on your screen, um, a recent project I was involved with myself in um, Bloomington, Minnesota, um, and Andrea Speck, Specht, who is speaking uh, in that image, um, has become an amazing leader in that city uh, through what was called Bloomington Theater and Arts Center and, Center and is now called Artistry. Um, helping to shape the future of Bloomington in some really profound ways through creative placemaking projects. Um, and on the bottom of the screen, um, several folks, um, uh, images that I took recently um, on the bottom right, comic book artists. And, and these young men are um, leaders in their uh, sector with um, creating uh, and distributing uh, uh, science fiction comic books. Um, these, are, these are arts and culture leaders. And in the center and, and the bottom left, um, traditional uh, practitioners uh, of arts and culture, um, the center, the, the, the Danza group in um, Minneapolis at uh, the annual May Day Parade, and, and the bottom left, um, I, I was in Kansas at a powwow. Um, but the drummers are very important um, in, in cultural practitioners in their community. Um, 
And so the, the, the point is there's wide ranging uh, roles that we play as cultural leaders in our community. Um, and we like to um, think about how then to apply those. And I, and I, I switched to um, the Minnesota cultural community and some of the institutions and organizations uh, and places that make up uh, an incredibly vibrant community. And, and defining culture quite broadly, you see in the bottom right, we have this, the Science Museum of Minnesota and the, the, the left, the Children's, uh, the Minnesota Children's Museum, um, the History Museum on the top right, um, and other um, arts, performance art and, and museum uh, venues, Walker Art Center, and at the top, the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. Um, amazing uh, resources um, in the community and also resources to uh, our program, fortunately, um, having uh, connections uh, with these institutions and being able to um, uh, have students working uh, in them, interning, or, or in some in some cases employed um, in these and many other uh, institutions in the community. And uh, the, the, this image here captures an, a, a different um, way of participating in, in arts and culture in the community, um, but it also speaks to the robust nature of um, of what goes on here and what we have to um, learn from and to participate in and to uh, draw upon for um, the, the way that we think about um, arts and culture and how we prepare ourselves as leaders in, in that sector. Um, and um, just one more kind of image of uh, another kind of variety of, of um, uh, both organ and these represent organizations as well as um, uh, leaders and, and activities and, and spaces within the community um, where people uh, participate in, in outdoors and in public sphere, um, whether it's uh, creating a, a car or vehicle that, that is a work of art and um, showing that off to, to everyone or um, performance and sculpture and so on that uh, many people enjoy. Um, Oh, and lastly, this is um, a little more of the variety um, uh, of cultural uh, participation and cultural practitioners in the out of doors and, and related to food and placemaking and traditional cultural practices. Um, and, um, and finally, I, I do want to end on food, um, uh, another great resource, the Midtown Global Market um, uh, in Minneapolis. Um, where the, the, the cultures of the world are present on a daily basis and people from all walks of life and all different kinds of um, cultures um, are, are active. And it's, a, it's an amazingly rich uh, and vibrant uh, cultural community that, that we're part of. Um, so just to sum up, in, in terms of the um, ACL program, um, the uh, Leaders in the Minnesota arts and cultural community um, are, are teachers, um, and they are working professionals in, in this various fields here um, that have to do with how do we organize, how do we um, advance uh, cultural practices in our cultural institutions uh, and organizations of all shapes and sizes in our community, um, and how do we maintain a vibrant and lively cultural sphere that we're part of. Um, the program itself, um, I, I'm just, um, I, I'm not going to go through all the people who teach, um, uh, but myself um, and Kathleen Corley, who is the student advisor and also an instructor. Um, I'm the faculty director um, and an instructor in the program um, with, as I said at the beginning, a, a fairly long history, um, 35 years now in the Twin Cities um, in leadership roles in arts and culture, and um, uh, working both at the university now and uh, nationally um, as a consultant and speaker, and um, uh, uh, continuing to explore and learn um, myself, uh, which is why I love this this work. And at the very bottom of the the screen, um, 
uh, there's an email address if you want to follow up and get specific information. Um, or, of course, you can also contact me. Um, and I'm happy to talk and email and uh, meet with, with anyone to, interested in the program. So that's, um, that's my um, presentation. I think I've gone almost 20 minutes, which is long enough. Um, I could have talked on and on, of course. But So now I'd like to um, uh, pose some questions for you. Um, since the Arts and Cultural Leadership Program is really about making connections, um, we do this in many ways um, in the classroom with our guest speakers, teachers, uh, student events and activities, and other programs that, that we try to offer to help uh, build a strong network um, for the community, with the community. And um, so I'll leave you with this question, uh, but you're also um, invited to have other comments or questions if you like. But, but I'm curious about how you see yourself as an arts and cultural leader, um, either now or in the future. Well, um, you know, I'm pretty new at this, and uh, I have a history or a background in international medical conferences, and now I'm moving towards uh, planning festivals and placemaking uh, pieces, and so I'm not really, I guess I haven't really thought of myself as a leader at this point, um, but I could see myself moving into that role. Um, I, I think that Ada, who I work for, uh, and Tico also works for, I think that we are definitely leaders in the Asian community um, with arts and culture and placemaking initiatives. Um, I think that uh, we were, you know, there's a lot of arts and culture within this community, and I think that we have been giving additional platforms to, uh, for, to highlight these arts and cultures. Um, we just did our uh, night market, which was an amazing success. Um, we were expecting about five to seven thousand people, and we ended up with fifteen. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a great weekend, and we're gonna hopefully do it again. I think we will. Um, and um, now we're starting some uh, planning for next year. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of where I'm at with it right now. Uh, you know, it's weird that to be asked this question: How do you see yourself as an art and cultural leader? Because I'm not sure I see myself as that yet. But maybe I am. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we, we, we wake up after a few years and go like, oh, yeah, I was doing some really leadership uh, activities and, um, and really should be considered a, a leader in arts and culture. Um, I'm curious about the night market. Um, is that just a one-time thing in the summer, or will it be uh, monthly or weekly? Yeah, um, it's a it's a really expensive endeavor to put on because of the because um, we actually pay our you know our artists. Um, we and um, you know we have a lot of expenses. We we we've moved it from a parking lot to the street, and there were a lot of expenses that uh, were incurred because of that move, like police officers and traffic issues and so on. Um, but uh, I think next summer we're going to do one at our current location on Western University Avenue for sure. Um, we're, we may do one in another part of St. Paul, and we may do one in Minneapolis. But we're also going to be working on a water Asian water festival. And uh, so I think that, um, you know, all of those, and there will be a, you know, a night market component to that um, where, with vendors and art as well. So, um, but we're still working, I mean, we've just begun the planning for that. Um, yeah, so, anyway, hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, that's great. It's interesting, I'm just reflecting on um, experiences that I've had. I've, I've made a couple of visits to Bangkok, and of course, night markets are every night and every day. <laughs> right, and you know, um, one of the, and I have and two. The, the challenge that you expressed about uh, the cost of extra police and moving things around. Obviously, in some places, the, the urban environment is just conducive to them being part of everyday life. Um, right. For and, some reason, here, yeah. they're not. Um, so what do we need to do to change our, our urban environment to make that a more regular part of our experience? And that is an excellent point. Um, 
when I, I've been to Thailand as well and, and gone to like the famous Chiang Mai Sunday night market, which has like, you know, probably 40 to 50,000 people who come out every Sunday night. Um, but they also have the infrastructure in place. Um, and it's not really in Thailand or at least in Chiang Mai, it wasn't really infrastructure. People just walked up to the street poles and plugged in their electricity. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so and, and that's what I noticed in Bangkok, too. Um, you know, and I think that culturally it's just allowed where the idea of us walking in and just plugging into electricity, Excel Energy would be there in a heartbeat saying, what are you guys doing, you know? And that, that, that violates so many, you know, laws and codes and so on. But I think that, um, you know, as we go forward, we are looking at trying to do some infrastructure um, to allow us to just plug in and to allow us to have water access and um, some of these things that really cost money to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we have to have funding for that, and that's always an issue with arts and culture. So, right. Right. Yeah. and I think the 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 point here, or one of the points, really, is um, to be an arts and cultural leader and to advance this idea of the culturally this cultural tradition or, or cultural uh, way of, uh, of of doing things in, in in the community and in the public realm and in uh, um, uh, in terms of the economics of community, um, it takes more than than acting with inside the, the silo, if you will, of the arts and culture. Um, the, you, you really have to think about the urban design and the economics and the, the cultural practices and the legal systems, and there's so much more involved in um, and that's where um, the kind of work you're talking about is really leadership work. Um, because it's advancing cultural practices in, in realms um, uh, outside the, um, the traditional arts and culture sector. Um, so keep up that, that, great, that great work. It's so exciting. Thank you. I could talk a little bit. Yes, please. <laughs> I mean, um, Jeff already said everything about what we're doing at the Little Mekong District. Um, me, myself as a leader, I just want to highlight Asian artists, um, be able to give them that platform. Um, another question that I ask myself is why can't, why can't an Asian artist be at the Walker Center? <laughs> Things like that. So, you know. Well, we have a, we have a small group for this experiment, which is kind of helpful for me since I'm just navigating this technology um, and sounds like a couple of issues with the technology too for others. Um, we have uh, Mia and, and um, Eleanor and who we haven't heard too much from yet. Can you hear me, Tom? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I'm, I'm doing uh, this by phone because... Oh. I had to uh, had a meeting that went until five, so uh, that's probably my issue is that I'm traveling. <laughs> oh, so um, you didn't you didn't I, see the PowerPoint then? <laughs> no, I could. Oh, um, I mean, okay. I mean, a lot of the images are familiar, so right, right. A quick reference was something I could do, um, uh -huh. and. Uh, to answer your question about arts leadership, I've always seen arts as a um, an artist as powerful ways of bringing people together, um, and sometimes it's just in a social uh, space, but sometimes. It can be focused around particular issues or mm -hmm. um, initiatives, and it can create a forum for a conversation to happen. And what I'm interested in now, right now, as a leader, is the whole conversation around racial equity. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that I've. This is something that I worked on as a white uh, curator and organizer um, my whole artistic career. So, 
um, there's a lot more conversation about this now than there has been in recent years, and mm -hmm. I'm ex excited about that, and you know, really excited about trying to get more traction and to make more progress uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's very compatible with the the goals, the learning outcomes, and so on that we've identified for the ACO program, and um, uh, we hope to um, be able to work with more and more um, leaders of all ages, really, but um, uh, up and coming leaders um, who can really take on those those issues and make a and make a difference. Um, I mean, I think. Many of the people that I um, showed you images of um, have addressed some of those issues, and, and they, they really all should, um, and, um, and hopefully we can contribute to that. And Mia, you, um, I've seen you pop up a couple times. Um, if your audio is um, doing any better. It is now. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so the question that you're posing is, how do you see yourself as an arts and cultural leader? Yeah. Um, well, it, honestly, I don't yet, and that's kind of why um, the program intrigues me. Um, you know, what what are the components that are, are needed, and how does one get to that level? Um, I'm not necessarily in the arts area right now. Um, and so how do you kind of break in there into that arena and eventually get to a, a leadership role? I think, um, you know, in any field, um, I don't know what the magic trick is to break in, if you will, but, um, but it's really about the passion and the passion for the work. Um, and that goes uh, a long way in um, whether you're volunteering or, or whether you have a, an entry-level job um, in the arts and culture sector um, or an artist, as Eleanor pointed out, um, many of our arts and culture leaders are artists and, and they are often um, on the forefront uh, and setting the pace and tone and, and addressing the ideas that are really important um, uh, and their leaders in doing so. So it's again, it's that sort of passion, and um, uh, and then committing oneself to to that work. Um, and it again, I hate to typify arts and culture leaders as people with a, a paycheck and a job for the work, because um, leaders do come in all shapes and sizes. But um, but in most cases, people work through organizational um, vehicles for, for a number of years, find a, 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 a way of thinking and, and a way of doing things that's unique and different, um, and finding a way to then practice that. Um, and, um, and, and like I was saying with Jeffrey, they wake up one day and like, oh, I'm a leader, uh, because you bringing people together um, bringing new and different ideas together or ideas that hadn't been brought together before um, and and making things happen in in communities and um, and and some leaders again become more focused on the uh, institutional roles and in leadership and and like some of the examples that I showed with the two of our major institutions in the community um, Guthrie theater and Minneapolis Institute of Arts with new leaders who, um, in the case of Kaywin Feldman at the, the Minneapolis Institute of Arts, um, she's had a few years now to, to really demonstrate some leadership and to move the organization uh, into some amazing new directions. Um, and we're looking at the new leader at the Guthrie Theater and what he's going to do uh, in the kind of work um, but also in the way the work is done, the way it involves people in the community, um, uh, and, and people who who work and 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 work their way up in in institutional settings, um, 
they, they, they might work their way up, they might be the director or head, but, but they might not really be a leader in the community. They might just be a good manager of an organization. And we have to ask ourselves, is that, is that really being a leader? Um, so um, it's not a simple either or kind of scenario and um, there's no um, easily defined pathway that, that one can take. It's really about carving one's own path and, and that's, that's the leader. Um, and you guys have probably talked about this earlier. What kinds of backgrounds are a lot of the students in the program now? What are, where are they coming from? Do they have traditional like arts admin backgrounds or are they just like visionaries or, you know? <laughs> well, um, I, I, I like to think all of those things. I mean, many do have more traditional backgrounds um, in employment. We, we, we do um, seek out people who are, um, who are not just at the beginning of, of the career, but, but are mid-career or, or working towards mid-career with a few years of experience um, and that experience can come in again in volunteerism as well as in paid employment or, or working as an artist. Um, and we we have there there are a couple of um, working artists uh, in the program now um, who are looking to to find ways to make a greater impact. Whether they become uh, institutional leaders or not, I don't think that's um, that's as important to them as it is advancing their capacity to, to impact the world and, and um, people they come in contact with and them as individual artists, the many organizations that they uh, interact with. Um, and um, people in visual arts and, and museum work and um, performing arts, uh, literary arts, um, I mean the, the, the students now, and it's not a huge uh, program, we have about 17 active students right now um, in the world of dance, um, in the world of theater. Um, um, but most have, or well, they all really have some level of experience, again, whether it's volunteer or paid work. Um, and, but that passion and, and wanting to ramp up the, what they're able to do and, um, and the impact that they can make. Um, and their career options in terms of um, being prepared uh, with formal training that um, that helps them move more quickly uh, into organizational positions or, or up organizational ladders, if you will. Um, so we um, it's an amazing uh, group of students. Um, and when I listen to their their projects that they do and their culminating projects is. I was just blown away with these are leaders. Um, they're thinking in new ways and they're they're bringing the community uh, along with them um, in in advancing um, not just the arts and culture sector per se, but different ideas um, and bringing people together from different cultural backgrounds um, to uh, make work and share work and um, celebrate. Uh, arts and culture in the community um, in some different ways and, and they're just some great leaders that are coming up. Again, I, I hope that um, addresses your thoughts and um, any, any further um, circling back around to, to Jeffrey or, or Eleanor? No, no takers. Thank you um, all for being here and for tolerating um, my awkwardness with this uh, technology. Um, uh, this was a first time experience with this format and um, we hope it was useful to you and um, please be in contact. Um, I, I'm happy to talk either about the ideas and, and um, work that's uh, going on in the Twin Cities community, um, as well as the Arts and Cultural Leadership Program itself. But um, but I, I'd love to follow up, and and I, I will continue to follow what you all are are doing. So um, unless there's any last minute um, thoughts from any of you, thanks, Tom.
Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. yep. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And we will sign off. Good evening.